tiles in Little Town. Probably review Little Town. Cardboard communities. We are taking a look at Little Town from Yellow Games, and I think this used to be called Little Town Builders when it was released in Japan. Uh, let's get right into the setup right now. First things first, we're going to put the board down. So the board does actually have two sides. They look really close, unless you notice some subtle differences. So we pay attention to this corner right here. There's some there's some ponds there, whereas on this side, those ponds aren't there. They're in other spots. So that's going to matter because as we're placing workers on this board, they're going to gather resources around them. And so the artwork on there actually represents the resources we would gather from different areas of the of the terrain. So the side of the board does actually matter. You're going to pick a side. They both play fairly similarly uh, as far as like complexity and things, but they are a different experience. So pick a side. Doesn't doesn't really matter too critically which side you pick and put it on the table. Next, you're going to take these five wheat tiles and place them on the board right there. Next, we're going to shuffle up these building tiles. However you do that, I'm not very good at shuffling tiles, so I just jumble them all up like this. And then we're going to pick 12 of them at random and place them back on the board. You should end up with something that looks about like this. Each player chooses a worker in house color and takes the required components. Uh, you, get, you get the following uh, number of workers based on your player count. So, for example, at a two-player game, we would get five workers in seven houses. But you take your player color. The players will put their point trackers on the board uh, of their color. And then there's a round marker. We're going to put that on round one to start. And then there's a first player marker that goes to the first player. We are also going to take these objective cards and shuffle them up and distribute them to the players. In a two-player game, each player would get four of these cards. In a three-player game, three. And in a four-player, two. And finally, we're going to give each player three coins. So this board's really empty right now, and it doesn't have any buildings yet. We haven't built our town yet. So when we're building our town, we're going to do that by doing one of two things. Since I only start off with three coins, and most everything takes things resources that aren't coins to build them, I've got to go gather some resources first. So what I do to gather resources is I place a worker into any empty grass tile. So ways that tiles can't be empty is if they have these art features on there that those actually generate resources. Or if there's a building tile there, I don't have any building tiles in there so I don't have to worry about that right now. Or if someone else has a worker placed on the board there. So if I'm the orange player, I can go right here. That's gonna give me resources based on the eight squares around me. That's right, eight squares because I count diagonals. So these two are gonna give me fish while this one gives me wood. So uh, I would gather th from the bank two two fish and one wood cube, and that would be my placement of that worker. That's pretty simple. It gets more complex as the game goes on and you can look at more benefits you get, and we'll touch on that here in a second. After we get some resources, we can start to build. So when we build, what we have to do is we take one of our workers. He's no longer going to gather resources. He's going to become a builder. So he goes here and builds. There's no limit to the number of workers that can be in that spot. So basically you can build as many tiles as, as you have workers in the round if you could afford it, but they aren't going to be able to do both jobs, build and gather resources. And the way how that's marked right there like that is a good way to, uh, it's a good way to indicate to people that, hey, I've already used this worker up. Um, so these two tiles, uh, this one indicates that it costs four stone to build. As we see here, it, it gives us eight victory points when we build it. And then it also shows this a greater than sign really is more of a transactional arrow kind of thing. And it's going to show that we are able to pay two stone in order to turn them into five victory points. And this one's going to say you can pay one coin in order to gather a, a wheat and a, uh, I think that's fish. So let's say that I built this wheat field here. I paid the cost and I put a little house over there to indicate that I, as the red player, built that wheat field. So now what's going to happen is if I place here in future rounds or someone else places here in future rounds, if the orange player places there, I pick kind of bad colors, but I think you can see that it's orange and red. This person's going to also collect a food, a wheat from there. However, 
they don't own that field. And since they don't own that field, they've got to pay a buck to that player to collect wheat from their field. So uh, there's a benefit in putting out tiles because they're going to earn you income throughout the game. Um, but there's a benefit in using other people's tiles because it makes some places just so valuable to go. Uh, you're going to continue doing that. The other actions you can do are you can pay three coins for any resource. And as you get objective, objective cards finished, you can turn those in and get the victory points associated with them. So once everyone's placed all their workers, we're going to go ahead and do the end of round, which is advancing the round one, and then everyone takes their workers back. And we're going to do that four times, do four rounds. That's the end of the game. Most victory points is the winner. So that is Little Town, and I think it does what it wants to do pretty well. And I, I think it's just a nice little package of a game, uh, a nice little alternative to uh, like some of the other family weight games we're playing, some of the other tile laying games, some of the other worker placement games that we're playing, and it's a good combination of all of them. Um, let's get right into it, I guess. These are my highlights for the game. Uh, very simple access to this game. So I think this is a game that really young children could play. You could play it with non-gamer grandparents. You could play it with uh, the neighbors. You could play it at church groups. You could play it at uh, you know school groups or whatever. Uh, and it's going to be accessible to about everybody. Um, it's super simple. The way how the game starts of saying you have two choices... And if you do choice one, then this is going to happen. And it's super simple at the beginning. It's I'm going to get wood or fish or stone. And and then as it goes, you're going to say, okay, now I've laid this tile there. You can explain the tile as it's getting laid or explain the tiles as you can pick them. Uh, but then people can start to understand, oh, okay, so now I can get this other transaction too. So it ramps up. And by the end of the game, it feels pretty good. It feels pretty uh, like there's some really meaningful choices there. And there's some really gratifying choices to make. But the fact that it starts as simply as it does and then it ramps up. I really, really love that. Like how it just, it's it's a game that is going to take people from being like a, uh, you know, like 100 game IQ to like 110 game IQ because it's going to teach them a more complex game by the gameplay itself. Um, it starts just so simple and then it just ramps up and becomes this really cool thing. Um, and I think this is a game that is just elegant in its design. Its simplicity is just kind of its strength. And I think this is a game that not just beginning gamers, gateway gamers are going to enjoy. But I think this is a game that people are going to enjoy, period. It's just got such a nice, elegant design. Um, and this might be my new go-to. It, it has been the river for my go-to like worker placement uh, introductory game. This might be coming it. Because I think this is as simple as the river, probably. But I feel like there's much more to keep me engaged. And probably other gamers engaged, too, with that tiling. And it actually becomes a little more complex than the river by the end of the game. So I think this is a great teaching game, a teaching tool game, but it's so good to play at the same time. So let's go ahead and put some numbers on it and break this down. I think the accessibility for this game is going to be most anybody can play it. I think that this is a game that, um, it says 10 plus, I think, on the box. I think even an 8-year-old could probably, probably play it. Um, I, I think it's not going to be too difficult. Um, it's something that if, if a little kid's played a couple games of anything else that's a hobby type game, they could probably take a look at this one and figure it out. Um, this is something that you could teach to uh, just non-gamers pretty quickly. Um, it's just got really, I mean, two choices that you can do. Put a tile on the board or put a person on the board. And it's not a whole lot harder than that, but then it's interesting. So it's simple but interesting. Um, so the accessibility I'm going to give to just about everybody. The theme, I mean, I can't imagine anybody not liking this theme. It's an adorable little game. I think it's not going to offend anybody. I think it's going to engage a lot of people. There might be an exception to this. There always is. When you say all, oh, there's somebody who's who's the contrarian. But I'm going to give it the all rating. Um, I think everybody's going to like the theme on this and stuff. The fun on this game, 4 out of 5. I really enjoy the fun of this game. Uh, the puzzly, like, I'm trying to figure out where the best pl place to put these tiles are. And then trying to maximize your placements. Uh, all that is just a very cool package. And then and then the way how it just uh, has that, like, money sharing and just everything in there. It just feels good. Like, the game just has a good feeling to it. It's a, it's a fun little puzzle. Um... It's not like a make you laugh a ton game kind of game, um, but it is a it is a you know just a really engaging good time. So four out of five for the fun, um, and I guess really I need to change my fun to being more like zaniness or I don't know. That's kind of what more I think about it. Uh, like a five out of five game to me is like a game where you're just like laughing and just having a ruckus time. Your cheeks hurt because you're smiling so much kind of game. It's not quite that, but it's still very very fun, um, and it's not a weakness. I mean four out of five is a great rating. 
Uh, replayability, 4 out of 5. I'm giving it a 4 out of 5 on this one because I think there's enough tiles in there to keep it rich. And then they have some gameplay variants that come in the box where you can do a draft or like a choice kind of variant of the game. So I think there's enough in this box to keep you going for it for a long time. It isn't going to get that 5 out of 5 yet, but I'm based on the insert design. I feel like they have ideas for more tiles, and I think we'll see expansions for this come out where we're going to get more tiles to add to our, our set of tiles if this sells well enough, I guess, probably. Um, so I think as we get more expansions and more tile selections, we're going to see this get a little more interesting. They could even do more board setups if they wanted to, which would be really interesting. Like I thought about they could put a river through the middle of a board. That'd be really interesting. Um, so I don't know. There's there's lots of opportunities for this to get even better. But as it is, it's got plenty of replay value. And it and it's not a long enough game that it outstays its welcome to where like you feel like, okay, we played that one. I'm not going to want to play it for a while. It's a pretty quick play. Um, just a buff filler probably. Uh, the design on the art in this game, Yellow has amazing design and art on everything they do. I mean, the symbols make a lot of sense. The only thing that was weird to me is that greater than symbol. I'm like, wait, why does it matter if this is more than that? And then I read the rules and I was like, oh, it's a transactional arrow thing. And once you understand that, it's super easy. Uh, everything in this game is just super easy to understand. It's really a nice looking package. It's going to be something that when it's on the table, people are going to go, oh, that's neat. I'm going to play that. So I give you that four and a half out of five. So what's my final rating on this one? This gets a four out of five overall, which is um, where we put our good games that we really like and suggest. Um, five out of fives are like top 50 games of all time, top 25 games of all time even. Um, so this one getting a four out of five is really, really solid. Uh, this is one of my better ratings for the year. Um, I think this is an official selection for me as far as the gateway and family games. Um, and I would say it's probably maybe the top in my family category games for the year. Uh, so this might be the best family game of 2019 to me. Um, I guess Wingspans this year too, but um, this is just feels more like a family weight, like younger children kind of family weight game. So um, I really, I, I think it's probably my favorite or certainly in my top three, four, uh, for sure. Uh, games that I played this year that are that family weight games. Uh, and like as far as a good gateway game, I think that this is probably the best gateway game that has come out this year. This is a game that is going to be as, as, as maybe even less complex than Ticket to Ride kind of thing. So this is going to be a game that's cute. People are going to play it and they're going to go, oh, that's adorable. Bring, bring the adorable in with it and then keep them for the cool gameplay and the teaching of like, oh, there's more to games. So this is my official selection right now for, for Gen Con 2019 for a gateway slash family game. If you're looking for a gateway or family game at Gen Con, I would suggest this one probably. So uh, I, I think that at a four out of five rating too, this is something that 80% of gamers would benefit from having around them, either in their group of gamers having a copy around or even picking it up one themselves. Um, I think the MSRP on this game is 30 bucks, so a pretty good price. Uh, so I, I think that's really solid too. So it's a good value. Um, I guess that's about it, guys. Um, hit, hit us up in the comments here. The other thing too is we've been looking at our analytics. Only 14% of people who watch our videos subscribe. So, I mean, like, maybe you don't want to subscribe, but it's right there. It's It doesn't cost you anything. You can subscribe. So um, thanks for watching, though. I've been Joel, and keep gaming.